Hey, welcome, and let's talk about how to make a presentation interactive. Are you tired of people falling asleep at your presentations? <laughs> I hope that's not happening, but if it is, we're gonna fix that today. I'm excited to tell you about all the ideas that, well, there's tips and tricks that I've been using for years, as well as I'm gonna give you some ideas from some of the top speakers in the world as to how they engage with their audience, keep it interactive, fun, interesting, and exciting. No more sleeping audiences. Nope, we're gonna be done with that today. Let's dive right in. Let's first talk about understanding interactivity with an audience. A lot of speakers might say, well, I'm giving a speech, so that's all the interaction I need. No, <laughs> you want to have something that engages the audience just beyond your speech whether it's asking poignant questions, whether it's doing games, whether it's having them up and interacting, maybe it's doing something musical or making it funny, engaging with them in an entertaining way, maybe through quizzes, etc. We'll talk about all of that, but think about the way that you're interacting. And if you're not at all, hey, you're in the right place, I'll give these ideas to you, but at the same time, I want you to think about the best speakers you've seen recently. What made it good? What type of interaction did they, apply into their speaking that made it so you're like, I like that. I want to go type in how to make my presentation more interactive. So thanks for being here. Let's talk first about incorporating technology. Have you ever heard of Mentimeter? A Mentimeter is such a cool tool because it actually utilizes live polling. Yeah, so you can show it on the screen behind you and you just say, hey, type in this code on your phone. And the next thing you know, the whole audience is now engaged through their phone. And don't worry, this is not a way to disconnect them. They're not gonna go to social media and zone you out. They're going to be interacting with you. And this is a really exciting thing because now you're integrating technology with the fact that they're used to doing everything on their phone anyway and a live presentation. Mentimeter is cool because you can have predetermined questions or survey or other types of things that you've worked on prior to make it so that the presentation is interactive with the audience. What I really recommend is that you listen to other speakers prior to yourself taking the stage so you can customize even what was just asked on stage and in real time you can get that on the screen with everybody. It's amazing. So check out Mentimeter. How about trying this? Real-time Q&A. Have you ever thought about that? A lot of people think, well, we'll just save the Q&A for the end. You know, questions and answers, we'll leave that for the very end of the speech. I'd recommend just try that right in the middle. You know, it's okay to just change things up. Imagine you're standing there speaking for 30 minutes and you have an hour. And now all of a sudden you go, hey, you know what? Let's open it up to some questions. And then you walk around the podium and you walk down into the audience. Oh. Now they're gonna be like, oh wow, now you're engaging. And you go, hey, tell me, what have you gotten out of this speech so far? Hey, that's a risky question, by the way. <laughs> and then ask them. If they've got nothing, everyone can laugh about it. And this will make you a better speaker because you'll realize they didn't get anything out of it, but equally you can improvise. And so as you ask questions and answers, this makes for an interactive audience experience. Now they're going to pay better attention because they don't know when you're gonna do that again. There's also interactive quizzes you can use, which is really fun, and this integrates technology once again. There's things like quizzes or Kahoot. Both of those are awesome. So if you go to quizzes.com or kahoot.com, you'll get a kick out of all the opportunities there because they've built in fun ideas, questions, things that the audience engages in. And what happens is they would actually create their own profile. It's usually not their name. It would just be some nickname they give themselves and they have an icon and, or an avatar. And it actually shows like a gamification. It actually shows who's answering, who's winning, who's the best at it. And people really get a kick out of that on Kahoot especially. Now let's hit engaging content delivery. First of all, the simplest, most basic one would be storytelling technique. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't focus on storytelling. And I'm telling you right now, if you focus on being a great storyteller, you will get more opportunities and you'll be a greater interactive speaker. In fact, retention is so much higher when someone incorporates a story into their presentation. So whether you're launching a new product or you're sharing about the software, it's great to tie it into a story because then someone can hang on to that. It's more interactive, it's more interesting. So become a great storyteller. Another tip that I have is to use props. Have you ever thought about that? 
use of props might seem like, well, I'm not Carrot Top. Well, none of us are. Carrot Top is amazing, but here's what I want you to know. When you integrate props into things, it's really interesting because people go, oh, well, this is extra interactive and fun. I have a couple of friends that do this so well, I wanna share them with you. I have a friend named Clint Pulver. You've probably heard of him. He's becoming a household name at the time of this recording, and he will be in the next few years, someone everyone will know. But Clint Pulver actually gives everyone in the audience drumsticks. And that's part of his story. That's part of his creation of something very special. And so it's a prop that he uses. He also has audiences receive a bucket that sits underneath their chair. So they take out the bucket, they take out the props of the drumsticks. And then Clint pulls off the blanket or the cloth that's covering his drum set on stage. It's a really cool piece. It's after he tells the story of a teacher who discovered that he was a drummer. Not just because he was a kid that was fidgety in the classroom as a little boy, but the teacher said, hey, you must be a drummer. So that's Clint Pulver's story. It's fascinating and it's wonderful. A lot of people can relate to it. And to have a teacher like that, now he brings in the prop to emphasize the point of the story. It's a very cool piece because then everyone's drumming with him while he does Def Leppard or whatever music he's chosen to drum with. It's a very fun, interactive experience for the audience. Another guy I like to talk about is Bruce Turkel. Bruce, for years, has played in a band. He's the harmonica guy. And he also runs a very successful branding agency called Turkel. And so Bruce Turkel has gone around the world giving harmonicas out to the audience, and he actually teaches them how to play the harmonica while he's giving his speech. I've seen him do this many times, and it's a wonderful piece, and he also has his branding on the harmonica, so everybody remembers where they got it. Just like Clint Pulver, with his drumsticks, he has his branding on there too. Those are smart ideas. And then there's my favorite entertainer slash speaker in the whole world. His name is Jeff Savilico. This guy started out as a juggler who became a household name in Las Vegas, entertainer of the year multiple times. He's a keynote speaker who integrates his juggling, unicycle, and other props, and it's hilarious. Now, there are times where he'll do workshops where every single person receives juggling balls and then they're all learning how to juggle in the audience. It's amazing to watch people who've never been able to juggle all of a sudden be able to do this. He's become a masterful teacher is what I'm saying. He uses props in all the right ways, and you can too. Let's talk about multimedia integration. You could incorporate videos, animations, and other things within multimedia that makes the audience feel way more a part of it and engaged and interactive. This is a really nice break, actually, from someone who's just speaking and all of a sudden it turns into a video or something that they can engage with. Now let's talk audience participation. I've already given you some ideas of other speakers who've used props and the quizzes and so forth that you can use, but these ideas are going to be helpful as well. So first of all, you could do breakout sessions. Breakout sessions are awesome because you can do those either online. If you're doing a Zoom presentation, you want to interact with the audience, you can break them out into little groups. That's a cool thing. In person, you can also do this just by saying, hey, pair up with the partner next to you and talk about etc etc. And so these types of breakout sessions can really work out nicely within a keynote frame and structure for interactive audience engagement. Then there's gamification. Now this is a really high level concept or professionalism and it's very hard for people to get to this level but my friend Rob Foray has perfected it. He can do this online or he can do it in person. He'll bring an entire game that's customized to the client and to their theme he can do all kinds of things like Wheel of Fortune or Four Squares or all of these other fun things that he has that are games that really interact with the audience in a cool way. It might be pop culture quizzes, it might be music history. He's got all kinds of fun things and it's all through his computer and on screen and so it's very high level stuff. But if you want to get into really interactive things, check out Rob Foray. He can do this in person or virtual, and that's what makes him so special. He's hired nonstop for being able to do this, as well as being a great keynoter himself. And then there's interactive handouts and surveys. And what's fun about this is you can put something on everybody's table or chair before you speak, and it could be a little survey that they take and fill out. That's fun. But there's also now the technology aspect of it. And the best way to do that that I'm aware of is Talkadot. Have you heard of Talkadot? Well, let me tell you about my friend Crystal Washington. So Crystal Washington has utilized Talkadot for a long time in her speaking. 
what she does is while she's presenting it, she says, I'm curious about what you guys think about this presentation. Here, check out Talkadot. And then they all sign in through Talkadot, either through a QR code or typing in a quick little code. And the next thing they can do is actually give her feedback on her presentation in real time. It'll come to her as a report later in an email. But what's neat about this is this allows the audience to give her feedback immediately testimonials, as well as the opportunity to be booked more. This is a really smart business tool. And so I hope you'll check out Talkadot. And also you should check out my friend, one of the best speakers in the world, Hall of Famer, Crystal Washington. Finally, let's talk about post-presentation engagement. How are you reaching out to the people that you've just spoken to? This is a great lost opportunity on a lot of speakers. And I'm even guilty of it myself. When I don't follow up with the client and ask how I can engage and interact with them further, I've missed opportunities. But then there are audiences who actually do follow along. In fact, when I'm on stage, I offer a QR code where they can go to my website and sign up to be a part of my blog and receive that every Sunday. That's the best interaction I have with some of my audience at this point. But then there's social media. There's other opportunities there as well. And so when it comes to interacting with your audience after the event. Think about how you're doing that. I've seen some great speakers do some really neat things by doing offers, by having a follow-up webinar after their speech. There's all kinds of ways to interact with your audience that way as well. On a final note, I wanna share with you one of the tricks that I've been using for years, and it's really been a fun thing for audience interaction engagement. When I can tell that the audience isn't really quite with me, I'll actually say, hey everybody, Let's just pause for a minute. Everybody stand up. I know you need a break. So then they'll stand and I'll go, okay, everybody move a little bit. Come on, stretch it out. Yeah. Oh yeah. Feel that neck crack. And so then everybody's laughing a little bit. Then I'll say, hey, I'm going to play some music. I want you to give as many high fives as you can in the audience. I'll press play. And then the next thing I know, they're running around doing high fives. This interaction piece, as simple as it is, gets blood flowing for the audience, gets them engaged. My audiences usually aren't falling asleep, to be candid, but I can tell you that this has changed things for me in an audience setting where I'm like, I don't know if they're really loving this as much as they should be. And so by having them get up, do something, it interacts with them in a way that perhaps other speakers haven't. If you're interested in more tools and tricks like this, I would recommend you check out liftofflab.com. If you go to liftofflab.com, you'll see a community of speakers that we've put together that are all working to become better engagement speakers on stage. They're working on their business, but also working on their presentation skills. We hope you'll join us there, and thanks for watching.